partly the reason I'm getting more surgery is because I feel like I need to look a certain way to be an actor. Like I do feel like I'd get cast. Some things, some people might not want to cast me if I've got a big hump on my back. And I feel like that needs to change as well because like I'm feeling like I need to change my, like the way I look to become an actor. And I know that is that is changing a lot, like diversity wise. Um, but I think there is still like a, a very long way to go. Welcome to the Film Forums podcast. My name's Jennifer Bullcock and I have with me Julia Carlyle, dancer and actor, known for Britain's Got Talent and Tin Star. This is the first podcast for me for Film Forums. I'm going to be interviewing women like yourself, women who are a force of nature, who have overcome adversity, who are dealing with additional challenges in their careers, whether it be disability, whether it be childcare issues or being registered carers. For you, you yourself have overcome additional situation that other people in this industry may not necessarily be aware of. So mm -hmm. would you like to tell us a little bit about your situation and how that has affected your career in the industry? Yeah, well, I suffered from scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. It's actually really common, but um, it's not usually as severe as mine. But um, I've had it since I was six, so I don't really remember life without it, really. And I was more of a dancer when I was younger. And they basically said to me that it's going to stop me from dancing. Like, from the get-go, they said... The first thing they said to me when I was six was, for this next two weeks in dance, don't jump. So I'm all jumps, I stood there. And then um, I always I always hated that they said that it was going to stop me from dancing. Um, and because I've always been a bit of a, like, a feisty one, I was like, nah, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And they said after the surgery, you won't be able to, you know, do all the bends and flips. So I just refused the surgery. I was like, well, I'm just not going to get the surgery then if it's going to stop me from doing what I love. And then obviously things took a turn, so I managed to get a surgery that kept me dancing. And then I got really into acting and I never really realized how having scoliosis would affect my acting. Um, but it actually, you might, you can't really tell, but it does make my body, my body's abnormal, really. So I can't wear uh, stuff that other people can in my arm, it makes my arms look super long, have a big like rib pump on my back. So in costume fittings, things wouldn't, wouldn't be fitting right because my body's like so out of proportion. And then it was in costume fitting. And I was like, oh, this is actually going to affect my acting as well, which I didn't really realise it would. But I'm still not really going to let it stop me. And I think it's great that, like, they are getting, like, more diverse people who just have a love for, like, acting and performing to prove that we can still do it. Do you know what I mean? But you don't realise how much it does affect it until you're doing it, I guess. Absolutely. And I guess, given the fact that you've had to have surgeries, that has impacted your ability for um, for training and availability for jobs and things like that. So for mm -hmm. a regular person who doesn't have any disability or health problems, um, they may be able to sign up to any training courses, go and yeah. join a drama school or whatever it is that they need to do. But for someone like yourself that has a disability or has to have regular checkups and um, uh, surgeries, that is another impact to your career progression and to your training. Has that had any impact for you personally? Yeah, well, obviously, because I've got upcoming surgery as well. So I've already had some about four years ago. But I've got some coming up as well. And it's always like, what well, if I'm doing an audition now um, and I've got a surgery date for like New Year time? It's like, well, what if I go for this audition, get really far, and then they're filming at the same time I've booked surgery? To me, it's a no-brainer. I'll just cancel my surgery. But at the end of the day, like, your health is very, very important. And I've got to remember that, that it kind of is a priority. So it is always on your mind. It is always on your mind because, as well, when I have surgery, I'll be out for, for three months. No auditions, no training. I won't even be able to think about any of that. I'll be, like, just trying to get better, which is... When you're when you're trying to become an actor, aspiring actor, like that time is so precious. Would you say though that 
the gift that that has given you though for your acting is from a method point of view that it's given you some uh, unique opportunities that you can then explore that when you have a character that you can actually relate to that in a way that perhaps someone who hasn't had those experiences those life experiences that you have had that you have those actual real life experiences that you can relate mm -hmm. to them yeah I honestly think so the the best actors are the ones who have like haven't had it easy do you know what I mean and um because we can like tap into that and it's definitely helped which I'm trying to look on the bright side here is giving me so much resilience as well because it's not it's not easy when you're like auditioning and um you know getting like rejected a lot it's just giving me the the like strength to just not let it get to me um because I've had to be strong I guess and um Obviously, it's not easy at all going through surgery. And I think, like you said, life experience is so important when you're, when you're acting, you can just tap into it. So I guess if you're looking on the bright side, it does benefit me a bit. Absolutely. So looking forward then, obviously you've got, like you said, if you've got to look thinking ahead, if you were to have, if you're going through castings and auditions now, mm -hmm thinking that you're, you've got surgery in January and February time, are you staying away from them or are you notifying casting directors of your health situation? How, how does that work for you? There's no way I could ever stay, like, turn down an audition. <laughs> like, I don't even, I don't even, if, if there's an audition, I'm going to be there no matter what. And even if they said, like, it's the filming starts and it's, like, the exact same date as my surgery, to me, like, it's my choice to have surgery right now, I guess. And that can wait. To me, it is acting that comes first. So I'm, I'm not really going to turn down opportunities because I don't think that would be fair on myself just because I've got, just because I've got like a disability kind of thing. Like I'm not going to turn down an opportunity because I want it just as much as anyone else. I shouldn't let my like differences stop me, I guess. Do you think that there could be adaptions within the industry for that so that you don't have to make a choice it's so hard I guess because like at the end of the day there's so many people they could cast to who don't have don't need surgery so it just make it easier for them like you don't realize the amount of people going for that part if I said to them like oh I'm, I've got surgery they, they just feel like they just say to me well we'll just get someone else then which isn't which isn't very fair I guess um that definitely is a lot that they could do but I just feel like because there's so many other people out there they just won't really do it for you do you know what I mean do you think that the industry does need to acknowledge that that there is um a tide of change that needs to happen in the industry to acknowledge disability and all sorts of areas where there are perhaps an untapped area of potential talent that is not being utilized because of things like disability um you know, single parents, carers, mm -hmm. um, you know, carers of d disabled um, children, or, you know, you might have people who are carers for uh, elderly parents and their availability may not be the same. Do you think that there is a tide of change that's needed in the industry so that we're not turning away this talent because they have requirements because of disabilities, etc.? I definitely think so, because there's people who if they are, say, carers or single parents, they can't just at the drop of the hand go to an audition in London tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? They won't be able to get that availability or get, like, say, childcare, for example. Um, and I think that they, that we should feel like we are able to speak to them and let them know and that they'd listen and try and sort that out for us. Do you know what I mean? And I think, like, self-tapes are great for people who are, um, like, single parents or carers definitely great to so say if you can't make the, the audition in Manchester or London for tomorrow then you know they should try work around it and say we'll get self tape in by this date you could try and make that work or you know I think they should be more flexible for us because there is a lot of talent out there um, I mean you yourself you're absolutely talented you you were on Tinstar you worked with Tim Roth himself can you remember the quote <laughs> what, what did Tim Roth say to describe you as your ta as your talent and an exceptional talent oh yeah extraordinary, extraordinary. Was, yeah so <laughs> if a casting director or a, a you know a, a producer or a director 
decides not to cast you because you're not available because you're having surgery, they're missing out potentially on an exceptional talent as described by Tim Roth. And this mm -hmm. is the point we have potentially here an untapped vast array of very, very talented actors and not, not just yourself, but there is a huge array of disabled actors that have um, access issues that really we need to uh, look at making those changes so that they have accessibility to the industry. Is there anything that you think that could help that from talking from your experience that you think could help support that? Well, I definitely think that self tapes would be great for for people like I mentioned before to continue, not just through the pandemic. Well, yeah, I think in person auditions are great for me. I think they're better, but like if you can't attend them, I think they should make them. Like if you can't attend this, and feel free to here's the script, send us a tape by this this deadline. But even like for myself, I'm part partly the reason I'm getting more surgery is because. I feel like I need to look a certain way to be an actor. Like, I didn't feel like I'd get cast. Some things, some people might not want to cast me if I've got a big hump on my back. And I feel like that needs to change as well because, like, I'm feeling like I need to change my, like, the way I look to become an actor. And I know that is that is changing a lot, like, diversity-wise. Um, but I think there is still, like, a, a very long way to go. I would agree with you there. There needs to be more acceptance for physical acceptance of, of different appearance wise mm -hmm. and obviously yeah if, I mean what I thought was great in Tin Star is your character there was absolutely no reference to anything about your physical appearance it wasn't anything no. about your character and that made it totally normal because there was no yeah, reference yeah. to it and we need more of that we don't we don't need characters who have some sort of visual difference about their body being part of the character yes definitely definitely because i actually well actually like the fact that it was nothing to do with my character no one mentioned it and no one needed to and it was fine and it, and it does actually it does actually mean a lot to to me as well makes you realize oh you know like we can do it it can be done and that that set that for me as as both a viewer and being involved with the production I think was a huge deal and it set a precedent there to say to the industry look it can be done we can do this in the industry we can make characters that you know mm -hmm. we can have blind characters we can have deaf characters that their blindness and their their, their 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 disabilities don't define their character it is just it is just part of who they are whether it be the color of their hair the color of their skin it is just part of that character and it isn't part of the story that is part yeah of them. yeah because most of my, like, most of the things I've done, dance-wise, I have been defined by yeah. it. And that was the first thing where it's just been, just been me. And, like, that my talent that's got me the, the role yeah. instead of, like, my story, I guess. So is it important to you to not be defined by your disability? Yeah, I, I do. At the same time as that, I love that I've been able to, like, tell my story and inspire other people. Like, I absolutely love that. But it, sometimes I'm like, if I can't carry me, like I want to be an actor because I absolutely love it. And I want to be known for, for my talent instead of just my story. It's something that I've thought about a lot. And I know that it's going to come with it because it's very obviously there. Um, but I, I just want to be in the same boat as everyone else, like there for my talent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Being accepted. Mm -hmm. It's important. Yeah, definitely just for... just an actor instead of that that dancer with the scoliosis yeah, you know what I mean yeah so so far as you're dancing then what's happening with your dancing journey well th that's the thing I'm still dancing now obviously because I had the surgery in America is that is that the surgery that was famously paid for by Simon Cowell that is the surgery the famous surgery <laughs> um which I'm so grateful for because obviously this that four years I've done that year after the surgery I traveled dance the country and it was amazing now the new surgery I'm getting is going to probably limit my dancing a lot and I'm kind of getting that to benefit my mm -hmm. acting so I look more normal I guess for acting which is sad actually mm -hmm. um because it's going to probably limit my dancing a little bit but it's sad but it's just a decision I've made I'm like 90% sure I'm going to get it so you're at this sort of crossroads where you 
this is the journey that you're taking now it, it's definitely predominantly acting is the path that you're going down yeah. now and this is the long-term route now yeah yeah definitely dancing is brings me so much joy as a hobby like I would never stop dancing I don't stop dancing I'm just walking down the road but um for career it's acting for me just just you found I feel like I found my home when I did tin star yeah mm. brilliant so moving forwards then what um is the plan with your career what what would be your ideal role if you could if you could cherry pick your ideal acting role so you you get in the room you're auditioning you're down to the last few for this ideal role what is your ideal role okay well she's on my wall that's Jodie Comer okay um I'm so inspired by her role uh, in Killing Eve so I think like I don't just want to I would play don't get me wrong I'd play just the you know the normal girl but it's the like characters that are so twisted and like that you have to go so deep to like understand them just that like make me want to be like wow I want to do that like I want to do that so her, her character is Villanelle it's just like oh my gosh to so some sort of like absolute like psychopath who's just like so dark and so deep but also absolutely like love like a very emotional character you know where it's like very dark and deep where you have to like fully dive into the character and like go for it or go do you know what I mean I want to make my maps about like why my character does stuff something that's like their brain just you just you have to like dive into it it's just something um, that I really want to get my hands into yeah brilliant mm -hmm. Jodie Comer what an inspiration I know that's it that's a drawing of her by the way that wow. I got for my birthday for my boyfriend I know that's how I'm, I'm obsessed with that one <laughs> she is she's very very talented and um from your sort of neck of the woods as well yeah and I still haven't met her one day we know her cousin though, don't we? Brian, yeah, Brian Comer. Oh, and he's a talented actor as well. He is amazing. He's just gone to London to go to college, so he's doing very well. So mm -hmm. much talent coming from Merseyside. So, all the film forums, listeners, viewers, where can they find you to find out more, to follow you and watch this amazing journey unfold? Oh, thank you. My main platform I use is Instagram which is just Julia Carlisle underscore XO. So you can find me. I am on Twitter, Julia Carlisle underscore X as well. Awesome. That's great. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us today. Thank you, Jen.